was thinking about how I, I grew up Mormon, and I don't know if you're familiar with the LDS Church, but you know it's it's sort of a product of American culture, and it's kind of fascinating once you step outside of it and look at it from the outside in. But Mormons are incredibly fascinated with genealogy, so they want to know where their family comes from, they want to know their ancestry, and so they go, you know, they 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 do a really good job. It's like they're some of the best. But it, to me, it almost turns into this um, fetishism, uh, sort of a like, how much Irish do you have in you? How much Scottish? How much Danish? How much this or that? Without actually recognizing that why why we why did they come here in the first place? You know why why are we here? Why didn't people decide to stay in their homelands? What what event or what series of events pushed them out of the place that they called home? to what would be called now the United States of America or Canada. And that to me is actually really interesting. So when we get to the title of your your blog, Healing from Whiteness, and this is where I think it's important to discuss what it means to step away from this sort of identity of being white. Because again, it, it was something that we're born into and we don't really fully understand. And to me, like we discussed, it's a, it's a form of disconnection. So... Um, yeah, I just want to get your thoughts on this idea of what it means to heal from whiteness. Well, you know, it's funny. I I, I don't even know if I'm attached to the blog title. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll give it a few years and we'll see if it's still a good idea. But um, I suppose what I'm trying to point to is that, yeah, whiteness is this thing that was imposed. I mean, or taken on out of desperation, uh, it's it's uh, you know I think an understandable thing. You're a you're a starving Irish mother, and you've got to feed your kids. And you know it's not like there was just a, a conversation of okay now become white and we'll give you these things. But you know over time you you get the idea that my kids can have a better chance if they don't speak Gaelic. You know if they're not easily identified as Irish because that's there's such a prejudice against the Irish. And so you don't speak the language to your kids, you know, you don't, um, it's little things like that. And so a lot of the ancestry is missed. And it's, and so much gets lost. You know, I would say whiteness is, um, it's economic political privilege, but it is spiritual cultural poverty. And it's very, I know, in vogue to talk about white privilege, and that's all there, and I'm not disputing it, you know, of course. And there is a poverty that comes with it, and it's very easy to um, to miss that. And so then there's this hunger, and then there's this sense of, well, you know, um, the place that I come from is just the home of uh, colonizers, and that's all we've ever been and all we are, and so that's pretty terrible and yet I still feel this aching spiritual cultural hunger in me. And so I'll go um, get my fix from brown people. Sure. Well, that's, you know, from their ceremonies and their, mm-hmm. cause that's where, that's where the real stuff is. Those are real human beings and, you know, white people never have been. And then you start to hear the, the trance of it is the, the way that whiteness gets projected back in time. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, whiteness comes from a certain thing, but then people will say, oh, not, you know, white people have always been like this. It's like, but hold on a second. They weren't white <laughs> yeah. for certain dates and times. You know, this comes from a certain time and place, you know, mostly North America. And so it's, um, you know, I've been thinking about it of how, um, I don't know if you've heard of Steven Pinker. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Definitely. And then, you know, Jordan Peterson. Mm-hmm. Jordan Peterson has been getting a lot of hype lately. And yeah. I have a number of friends who are very into them. And Steven Pinker, you know, understandably, because he's he's uh, spreading a lot of, he's kind of hope-mongering, mm-hmm. you know, saying, look how much, it's it's so much better than people think it is, and and, and yeah. everyone's being too pessimistic, and, the, you know, yeah. less violence, less, less war, all of that. And fundamentally what he, what Jordan Peterson, what a lot of them are making the case for is empire. They're making the case for Western civilized uh, life, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, and and isn't the Enlightenment amazing? And look what Europe has done for the world. The challenge is this is the exact same. Um, This is the white hot center of white nationalism. 
mm-hmm. is look at what Europeans have done for the world. And of course, when they say Europeans, it's a very specific thing. What they mean is empire. You've never heard a white nationalist say, it's like, yeah, you know, <clears throat> Europeans done a lot of good for the world. Like my ancestors in the Abkhazian mountains, we grew apricots. We had like 40 varieties. Dry them on our rooftops. It was amazing. <laughs> you know, we had this invented a, a foot plow. My ancestors in Scotland is an incredible idea. Or you know, the songs. Man, you should hear our folk songs and stories. Why some people would know hundreds of stories. It's never that. It's always roads. Uh, you know, the industrial revolution, and <clears throat> it's always that. So, the clearly, the world's in a bad place. And when we look for the solution within empire, we get more empire. But if our whole identity is rooted in empire, which is what whiteness is, you know, that's one thing I said right in the beginning is that whiteness is one of the most recent branches on this tree of empire. And so both white nationalists and people like Steven Pinker and, you know, anyone, and then you see this, well, I've got to be proud I'm white. But that's the spell in full effect. Is now we're defending the very the we're defending that which afflicts us. It's the you know um, somebody I studied with he has a a really beautiful kind of formulation of first generation trauma, second generation God, and that the basically the thing that traumatizes a generation of people will likely be deified by the next generation of, of that same group of people. So the English come into Scotland, you know, a certain amount of colonization, and, and the first generation will resist, but the second or maybe the third will want to be English. And it's not, a, it's not an uncommon thing. And, you, and, and it, it's not always so overt. But, you know, when I was going to the Gaelic College on the Isle of Skye, Salmo Rostock, they, um, I just remember somebody saying, like, we're just as good as any English university, as if that's the basis, <laughs> as if we need to be comparing ourselves to that. But it happens like that. Right. And so, um, so the, the thing that, that was, was so destructive to our old timers, <laughs> we've now held up as um, the cure, as the medicine that we need, when it was really the sickness that came in. You know, it'd be people, I don't know, like people getting measles and then saying these red spots are, are a sign of my health and virility or, or, or something and, and not and refusing any treatment. And, of course, this is very hard for a lot of people to hear that this kind of, you know, whiteness could be a, a sickness of sorts. Uh, and it's, it's not the, the European descent that's the sickness because there's so much beauty in traditional, you know, folk and indigenous Europe. Yes. Uh, there's so much beauty. But the whiteness is a different thing. The whiteness is like the shroud on the mummy, you know. Right. It, it covers it, so you never, you never see the body. 